Hi everyone, thanks so much for stopping by. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Thanks to all the contributors. Guys, I love you. The amazing donations I went to see. I got so many donations this week. We're going to get closer to our goal of the observatory. Thanks for trusting in me. This is Bessel Crater. Guys, there's so much coming on this channel. I'm going to be showing everything I'm doing. And for some reason, I was granted this wonderful chance of being able to view the surface. And I'm sharing it all with you. And it will only get better and better. My computer is still, um, it's something's wrong with it. So I might have to get it checked at the end of the week, hoping that uh, from here to the end of the week, it will go better. Mons Argeus at the right, you just saw there. And again, color at the bottom. We're looking at Manilius Crater. Oh, uh, we're looking at color too on the surface. And the little city-like area at the bottom in the dark there. These are all areas I will try to zoom into. And whether it be, cloud um, that we're seeing or smoke is something on the surface we're seeing color ufos all over the place right guys i've been working on the videos and uh, uh, i am concluding that whatever they are i mean ufos are unknown objects whether they be satellites alien or human or just debris uh, you know what guys uh, could be asteroids too you know they say there are asteroids floating around earth and i've seen them so could there be asteroids floating around the moon? For some reason, um, there are so many secrets to uh, what's up there, and uh, the people trying to find out what's up there are not bad people. We're just curious, right? We're curious to find out where we came from. It's our livelihood. It's normal that we want to know this. Manilius to the left. To the right, they're, they're both craters are in the photo. Manilius left and right, um, Men Menelaus. These are beautiful craters. Bessel too on the right. Mare Serenitatis is on the right top corner is that turtle back darker area there that you can see. Getting to know the craters. Uh, Manilius at the top, right, which is just below Mare Serenitatis. Uh, we're going to see a couple of areas again, Manilius. To the left of it, you see Manilius is a crater, a smaller crater. And then over to the left again in the green area, a smaller crater, uh, another crater, but with a long stretch that looks much like a bridge you can see there and to the bottom there i just got a star up on that odd bridge like corridor like uh, area manilius again at the bottom of mare serenitatis we can see the beautiful breathtaking colors on the surface and it's what astonishes me so much well it doesn't astonish me anymore it more or less mesmerizes me because the fact that you know, even some of these areas are looking, this is Eratus Thenus Crater. So you're looking at Montes Apenninus, which is the Montes Apenninus mountain range, the Apennine mountain range, to the right of the crater that you see there, underneath, which is Mare Imbrium, underneath um, Mare Istrum, and that hole, which almost looks like a lake or waterfall, but again, it could be sky or atmosphere that we're detecting there. You're a bit closer, a lot closer, actually, and it's just, oh, it's intriguing me. The blue is intriguing me, and you could just, you just know it's natural, you know, when you look at this photo, and you know there's no manipulation, and I I so assure you that there is not, and I find it's important to say so, because many people are seeking truth. I mean, who who isn't, right? And if I was to start this page, and first of all, <laughs> risk my life and my son's life and my entire family's life for exposing what I believe is um, structures, life, alien life or human life. There's some kind of species up there on the moon. As crazy as it sounds, right? I mean, I never thought myself I would be saying it, but one thing's for sure. Look at that on the left there. All these anomalies on the surface that lead us to look like structures or objects, man-made objects. Um, we're looking at possibly clouds and you know, the structures up there, guys, might not be human. You know, we never know. It could be alien. Um, people talk about uh, breakaway civilizations, meaning people from Earth that would have left Earth to begin their own civilization. Well, <laughs> when, like, when would it have been done, right? You know, I think we were... There's a gap in the history about the past, what went on. And at times, and most often, I believe that there are 
and this is just an assumption, of course, uh, my hypothesis. But, you know, if something was changed in history, no matter what the book, no matter what the document, if something, if some crucial evidence would have been changed in the past, okay, that was very important, both uh, pertaining to religion, um, everything, politics, uh, an overall global um, effect, if you want, if a word or if um, dates would, would have been changed in some very important documents that many people depend on, so long their beliefs, systems in life, what would it mean? It would mean that we would be totally lost on all of our findings and science would be based on maybe part of a lie. Whether it be deliberate or not, I'm not saying that science is a lie. I am not. So many people are working hard, probably every, every one of them, every scientist. But, you know, there's a higher being or higher ruler that possibly is running every science and has led the laws and has written the rules of every science. And, you know, you can't help but wonder why it would have been changed. It doesn't mean it was, but could it have been changed? And why am I saying could it have been changed? Because we're seeing a moon that's very different to the moon that we've learned about for the past 50, 60 years. I can't help but thank all of you, the ones who are supporting me, the ones who not necessarily are supporting me either, the ones that come here that are maybe just curious, or maybe some of you disagree because some of you disagree so very respectfully and come here and totally disagree with me, but, you know, tell me that you don't put me down. Thank you. I don't really care, actually, the ones that don't put me down, but I so care about the ones that appreciate me. You know, you got some good people in life, and uh, this is where I learned it. I learned it here on YouTube that, you know, humanity has a chance. There are so many freaking good people out there. I love you guys. The 12th of March, guys. It's not yet. There are UFOs, un unidentified flying objects, that are going underneath the white surface or layer. I can't help but think that that surface or layer would be clouds. Why would it not be clouds? To confirm this, or, you know, to be on the safe side, look at the structures. I mean, Monty's Apennines at the top. Sorry, changing subject. The mountains don't look like mountains when you zoom in. When we're zooming into the moon, it's different. The surface is very different. And the telescope will not pick up a small crater. It will focus on the white one you see right here. It's not going to focus on the 10 or 15 other objects that are smaller beside it. But when you zoom in, the big crater goes out of focus. And then the smaller objects come into focus. There's so much on the moon as proof. Like I was saying before, to lead us, Radistinus on top here, to lead us to believe, to look deeper. So that's why I'm looking into the greens and blues. Come on, guys. Greens and blues. We're seeing lights light up. And three to five lights simultaneously that depict us a shape on the surface. What the heck is that? It reminds me of boundary lights, you know, like it could be tower lights for the objects that are flying, seeing that we're seeing like hundreds, literally. I don't know how many we've seen so far in 15 minutes of footage. And out of the 15 minutes of footage, I've only looked at five minutes of footage for UFOs. They are there. And I believe they are in all of your photos and footage. Absolutely. It's finding ways to zoom in, of course, and keeping the quality. There's no science to it. It's, it's simple, simple math. For some people in life, it's important to know what's on the moon, not just in, on the moon in general. Why am I saying the moon? Because in general, uh, the moon is going to tell us a part of where we're from because we'll find out if there's other life. This is Copernicus on the top left. 
um, Eratosthenes on the right at the end of the Apennine Mountains. And underneath, again, beautiful greenery. And not just greenery, we see the greys, right? The, the same tones that we see here on Earth, they really, really are the same. Um, on the top, in the center, you can see block-like objects. And the closer we get in, we see that they're, they're sort of placed there. So it could be, you know, it could have been constructed. There are many objects and um, anomalies on the surface of the moon that really do look constructed. Guys, we need as much as one for proof. And we have more than that. I think many channels have found objects. I'm not the only channel. Look at this beautiful area. This is just at the bottom. We're talking like 10 miles from Copernicus craters wall at the bottom. Look at all the uh, detail in this photo. Guys, there's a lot more to come. I wanted to, to make the video longer. There was just too much to stick in. Uh, baby steps. So thanks for your support, guys. I love you so much. All these wonderful people who got in the telescope and who are now contributing for the observatory so we can get that telescope up higher guys here's another great list here of channel contributors i was overwhelmed to see you guys uh joining the team to be able to research and i have yet to read all of your comments which i will tomorrow morning guys i love you so much for this this is these are the new most recent contributors guys i love you thanks for the generous donations guys